Hey guys, Josh from CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com. I'm here with Cody and Brian, and today we're exploring old mines outside of Joshua Tree National Park. If you've been following this channel, then you probably know I don't do a lot of off-roading videos. So when my friends invited me to explore the Old Dale Mining District in Joshua Tree, I jumped at the chance. Before we go any further, note that this adventure requires a high clearance and four-wheel drive vehicle. If you don't have both of those, you should definitely not do it. Of course, since we are passing Indio on our way out to Joshua Tree, we had to stop at TKB Bakery to grab lunch. Got our lunch from TKB Bakery and we're heading in to Joshua Tree National Park. From TKB Bakery, it was another 30 minutes to the southern entrance of Joshua Tree, and then another 25 minutes from the entrance to where we turned off to go towards the mines. Alright, so this is where we're at, and we are heading up to these mines up here. So we gotta go to this cutoff, and then these are the mines that we're heading to. Road not maintained, four wheel drive vehicles only. From the turnoff and the sign, it was about nine miles to the junction with Old Dale Road and the Brooklyn Mine Road. This part had a lot of washboard, but it wasn't a particularly tough drive. Also note that this is not an adventure you should do when it's hot and there's no cell phone reception the entire time. I don't know what the remains are that we found, but as we were driving, we saw these remains, so we decided to stop and check it out. After looking at the map when we got back, I believe this is the remains of the Sunrise Well. I'm not 100% though, so let me know if it's something different. Alright, we're about 8 miles off the park's main road on the dirt road that we came in, Old Dale Road. This is the junction and we're taking the Brooklyn Mine Jeep Trail that direction. As soon as you make this turn off, the road gets significantly worse and continues to get worse as you make your way to the mine. It starts with just a couple loose rocks and then it builds to getting bigger and bigger rocks in your path. Right here on the way back to the mines, we're actually officially leaving Joshua Tree National Park. So that's the national park back there. And where we're going is not the national park. Before you take a two wheel drive car on this, I definitely would not. It's a lot of big and jagged rocks. One thing to note as you make your way back is that it's incredibly easy to get lost back here. There are not any real signs out there and the road can be hard to figure out which direction it's going, so be sure you have a GPS track or something like that so you don't get lost. We are in the middle of nowhere right now. We came up this wash and looks like we're finally gonna see the remains of a mine out there. This is the terrain that's out here. There's also a lot of random pieces of metal and barrels and stuff. Found something, we're gonna go check it out. Based on the map, I believe this is the remains of the Rose of Peru mine. There's also the remains of a mine out on that hillside too, so I think we're in the right area. So we found this mine shaft, and it goes really far down. There's no signs or anything out here, so we're just exploring and seeing what we can find as we head back into the canyon. As we left the remains of this mine, this was definitely where the road starts getting pretty bad. This is an example of something you definitely don't want to go over in a two-wheel drive car. This is definitely a newer type of structure out here. Not sure when it's from. New enough to have graffiti. I don't know why people do that. I guess if you want to have some s'mores, they already got the, uh, the tools for them out here. I believe these buildings were part of the mining camp for the Rose of Peru mine, and it's a point of interest for many people as they're heading out towards the other mines. Now we are heading back into the canyon. After another 15 to 20 minutes of rough driving, we made it as far as we were comfortable with our truck, parked, had some lunch, and then got to exploring. Found our lunch spot. We made it all the way back to the mines, so getting down on some TKB Bakery. 
and then we're gonna be exploring. This is called the Trump card sandwich because they just keep adding to it. Avocado, salami, bacon, tomato. I don't even know what else is on here. It's darn good though. Finished TKB Bakery. Now we're off to explore some mines. Right, Cody? This rock right here is why we decided to kind of park back where we were at. That is our first destination, making a way around the road. I believe there's a mine shaft back there though. This area was home to the Gold Standard Mine, which is the first one that we explored on our trip. Also note, we saw no other people the entire time we were back here and it was a weekend. Remains of an old house that fell back here. There's a bathtub. Yeah, that's the only real noticeable thing. The ruins here didn't really have much left other than some broken down buildings, old wood, and metal. You can see where we parked way down there. Hiked all the way up here to the mine. Right, so there is an open mine here. I'm putting all the disclaimers on the screen right now. If you choose to enter a mine, definitely be safe. I don't really have a lot to say about this mine. We explored all the passageways we could find and here are some of the highlights from our time in it. Getting back in the mine. Check it out, we even got some mine cart tracks heading back in. Two different ways. All right, we, we made it to a mine shaft. Not gonna cross over that. I guess it looks a little bit sketchy, but definitely a ladder down there. We made it back to the T. Now we're heading to the right. Also note, this is really warm in this mine. I thought it was gonna be cold, but it's not cold, it's warm. We've reached the end of the mine. I don't know where it ends on the left side. We didn't jump over the mine shaft, so. All right, we are heading back out from this mine. All right, we made it back to the bend where we came in. Definitely watch these nails, they stick out at you. We made it out of the cave. Woo! I guess it was a mine. Woo! Survive. All right, on to the next one. Saying goodbye to the gold standard mine, and now we are heading on to the next one, which is over there. In case you guys are coming four wheel drive, there's this big boulder right here, so maybe you can go around this way, but that's a pretty tough thing to maneuver around. Almost made it back to the next mine. You can see the buildings right there. We found this awesome little rock house. All sorts of remains of different metal things on the hillside. Somebody left firewood, a barbecue, and this really nice rocking chair here. Obviously, uh, there's some shooting that happens out here as well. This house was about a 10 minute walk from the last mine and it was really well preserved and looked like a place that people actually spend the night. Leave it cleaner than you found it. And there's a log. Someone was here five days before we got here. Honestly, it's sad to say that this is in better shape than half the other things I filmed for this blog in nature. So definitely leave this as you find it if you come out here. There's also some shoes up there. There's some cans of vegetable soup and beans. Somebody left coolant and there's dollar bills all around here. 
What the heck? Someone left a duck here? After leaving the house, we explored around the surrounding area and there's a few more buildings that are in disrepair before making our way up the hill towards the mine. It's really cool to be out here exploring this area. So much unique mining history that's relatively untouched for you to see. Someone on a video we watched said that this was a cyanide hill, so I guess we're staying away from that, but I have no idea. Check it out, there's a huge pile of old cans here. Like a thousand of them. Looking for the mine and I climbed up here, but they found it down there. We're heading into mine number two. Heck yes. Also, there's a massive hole outside of this mine, so uh, I can't see the bottom. You don't want to fall in there. As we head into the second mine, same disclaimers as before. It was Cody's idea to bring these awesome light up glow sticks so that everybody can see each other well. This mine is definitely a little smaller than the previous one. All right, we made it through the first shaft. There's more minecart equipment track and there's two ways to go on this one. What do we find? We got a mine chute here? What? Oh wow. That's a good ways down. It's almost like a, some type of ore shoot here. We've got a ladder that uh, goes up there. Definitely not taking this ladder. So we've reached a giant hole in the ground and uh, I think that's where we're turning around. We didn't really want to test this wood with how deep that hole is. Very long way down. That's uh, it for our second mine today. Pretty crazy. Look at this vein of some type of mineral right here. It's crazy. Retracing our steps on our second mine of the day. Leaving mine number two, this one's called the Brooklyn Mine, the giant hole. We're heading back to the truck. After exploring the mine, it was only a 10 minute walk back to the truck, but we took our time to see if we missed anything on the way there. Which one was your favorite mine, number one or number two? Number two, definitely. Why? It was longer. Longer? Yeah. What was your favorite mine, one or two? I think I'm gonna go number two also. What? There was a few more offshoots, I think. Yeah, I'm definitely going number two. There was a, <laughs> I'm voting for number two. There was a ladder and there was a lot more offshoots and drops. I'm going number two. <laughs> Passed our first mine, I made it back to the car. Now we gotta figure out how to turn around so we can go back out. We made it back to the building that we were exploring and uh, we have one more thing. We're gonna see this kind of stamp mill thing up here. Made it up to the top of the structure. There's the building down there. And there's a huge mine shaft right here. It's really deep. I can't even see how far down it goes. Heading up this small hill to see if there's a good view down into Joshua Tree. 
As we came around this bend, we found another mine, so we're gonna check this one out before we end the video. We're going to explore mine number three. This mine has a massive hole outside as well. It actually looks like one of the biggest ones we've been in today. Oh, oh really? What a bummer. Oh, uh, we walked all the way down here and it was just a cave, not a mine. After walking down to the cave, we headed back over the hill and past the stamp mill back to our truck. From here, we were planning just to drive back, but we decided we also wanted to try to find the famous building on Old Dale Road. If you're used to off-roading, this is probably not that bad, but we weren't used to it, so this was definitely the worst off-roading I've ever done, going up this hill to the building with the California Republic flag painted on it. I believe this building is part of the camp that supported the Sunset Mine, which is in the area, but I'm not 100%, so let me know if you know in the comments. But it was definitely pretty interesting to see, as it's a huge point of interest on Old Dale Road that lots of people take photos with when they off-road out here. Props to Brian's vehicle for making it all the way up here. Just like that, our time in Joshua Tree is done. Thanks to Brian and Cody for letting me tag along on this adventure. Hopefully you enjoyed us. Let us know in the comments and we'll see you on the next one.